Hello and welcome. Today I am returning to the Pacific 1941-1945, a game about several uh, landing operations on the uh, on the islands on the Pacific during the World War II. And uh, today I am going to play probably the most unique scenario in the entire game, a battle of Shumshu. Uh, why it is unique? Because it is Soviet landing on the uh, Japanese island. Uh, such thing happened at the end of the World War II, uh, at the uh, 18th of August 1945. Uh, Stalin's uh, um, ambition, um, ambitions was uh, to uh, capture about the half of Japan and to uh, make a joint occupation uh, just like uh, Soviets uh, did in Korea or in Germany. But to do so, uh, Soviets need to land there. And there was a problem. Uh, Soviets had no experience with such an operations. They had a lot of marines uh, units at the beginning of the war, but most of them got wiped out at the first stage of the war, war against Germany, suffering extreme losses uh, at uh, Leningrad and Crimea. So uh, they hadn't uh, much uh, units that could perform any effective sea landing operation. To attack Shumshu, they had to borrow some uh, land, large uh, landing craft in, uh, infantry from US, and all they could use was about three marine uh, battalions that had to land first to prepare the uh, landing zones and then to uh, move their, their regular infantry units. Also. They lacked of uh, uh, ships that could perform, uh, that could perform uh, fire, that could uh, uh, supply uh, units with uh, artillery and so. They gathered everything they had in this area, but <clears throat> most of these uh, ships were very small with uh, some small guns like 75 centimeters, uh, 100 centimeters. There were no uh, cruisers, no uh, battleships, of course, no, uh, no carriers. And all this uh, flotilla of uh, small artillery ships was gathered here as well. The only thing that Soviets could provide uh, and which was uh, quite sufficient was an air force. They could send some uh, ground attack aircraft uh, to provide some help to their men who landed at Shumshu. Uh, Soviet landing uh, zone was the nor uh, northeastern part of the island. And, and uh, they uh, hoped that uh, Jap Japan uh, soldiers would be surprised, so they w won't show much resistance. And it was partially true. Uh, Japanese soldiers were, were quite surprised by the uh, Soviet attack, and because of that, Soviets managed to keep uh, their landing zones safety. But, right in the next day of combat, uh, Japanese forces used uh, the, their uh, tank group, mixed tank group that performed a counter-attack against Soviets. And this group uh, contained a lot of various uh, tanks, armored cars and so, and, and this time Japan so Japanese soldiers managed to surprise uh, Soviets who hadn't any tanks on their side. But uh, Soviets had enough of the anti-tank weapons and the Japanese tanks weren't quite effective. So, uh, despite some initial success, Japanese counter-attack was repulsed. It was, uh, what is interesting, the last tank battle during the World War II. And uh, right in the next day, uh, uh, Japanese soldiers were struck with a message that uh, Japan is about to surrender. So they started to lose their morale very fast. The entire battalions uh, disappeared, and uh, this uh, what made uh, uh, Japan soldiers to move. Uh, sorry, uh, Soviet soldiers to move down the island without much issues. But if uh, if such me message wouldn't reach uh, Japanese garrison that fast, maybe Japan uh, Japanese soldiers might put more effective resistance and maybe uh, Soviets wouldn't be able to capture Shumshu as quick as they did. Uh, anyway, a battle was quite bloody for both sides and uh, Soviets learned 
that they haven't uh, much uh, staff experience to provide to make a full scale uh, landing operation in Japan. So uh, this battle this battle actually saved a part of Japan from uh, Soviet occupation. And here we have a setup for the historical scenario for this battle. This game comes with two uh, scenarios for Shumshu battle. One is historical, where uh, both sides have uh, units that they get had. And uh, there is one alternative uh, scenario, where uh, Japanese forces are much stronger and uh, they are not, not uh, d uh, disorganized and demoralized uh, by the news of the uh, surrender. So, in this, al in this alternative scenario, uh, Japanese soldiers might fight much more effectively and uh, Soviets have much more troubles uh, with capturing Shumshu. But here I'm going to play historical scenario. As for other special scenario rules, uh, the entire terrain on the island has its own uh, rule that says it, it, it contains uh, uh, minus one modifier for combat and plus one modifier for movement. Of course, not when it comes to roads. And at the first uh, day of combat, uh, Soviet armored units are not moving, while in the next day they have to move uh, sh uh, their shortest road uh, into, uh, into the Soviet positions and attack as uh, quick as they can. As they can. Uh, Soviets also get uh, some reinforcements in the day too, because uh, they couldn't uh, land all their units in the day one. They have three ground attack uh, units and Japanese uh, side has one minefield. Just like before in the Angaur uh, scenario, I'm going to use it with my home, uh, own home rule. Because uh, when you play uh, uh, with against an, another human player, it is pretty easy. He notes a, a, a number of the hex he wants to place the minefield and when your unit enters the minefield he revealed uh, this hex and then everything goes on. But when you play uh, solo then uh, I decided to use something else. Every time an uh, enemy unit enters uh, a new hex I'm rolling 1d6 and if I roll four, six, then there goes a minefield. There is only one uh, minefield uh, counter for this scenario, so when the first minefield is, uh, re uh, is shown, that's all, no more of the minefields. Okay, I think that's all when it comes to the preparations and we can start the game. Okay, we are starting turn one. And uh, we are starting with air phase. So, uh, we have uh, in this scenario uh, only a Soviet player has uh, some air forces. In the alternative, uh, alternative scenario, uh, Japanese player also have some, not a much, not much, but still. But here I have my air units uh, only. So what I'm going to do, I will make one attack against this uh, Japanese artillery, and I will place. Uh, to other here, so I will be able to use them to support my uh, combat. Okay, so I'm uh, performing this uh, ground attack unit attack against enemy artillery. Uh, Soviet uh, uh, ground attack units have five strength points, so I will have to use a table for the lone attacks of the air uh, uh, units and uh, here sorry and I have five points so I will use four six verse and I have to roll one d6 wow that was pretty effective roll it was five so uh, Japanese artillery suffered two strength points loss that's good that's good and you will soon see why because this Japanese artillery can be a real problem uh, during our uh, landing operation. So, Japanese artillery has to suffer two strength point loss. 
this uh, AO unit is removed, we can't use it in this turn, and now, uh, when it comes to artillery, this is interesting, because normal units have 3, 3, 2, 2, 1, and artillery has 4, 2, and 1. This uh, shows the situation when, uh, where artillery is much more vulnerable for any losses. So, thanks to the one very effective attack of the ground uh, attack AO uh, uh, units, we managed to uh, make Japanese artillery from four strength points to the only one strength point. This is... this was pretty good. Okay, uh, that's all when it comes to the air phase. And the next phase is... Air, air landing phase. We don't have any air landing stuff in this uh, scenario, so we can just ignore this phase. Next we have art, uh, artil uh, artillery uh, uh, phase, when attacking player might perform a barrage with his units. I'm not going to perform any. And next we have a sea landing uh, phase. So now our uh, naval units might perform a sea landing. We have three sea landing groups here. I might move my camera a bit to show you everything. Now, uh, these guys already landed, so we don't have to make any sea landing stuff for them, but now these three groups are in the range of this Japanese artillery. It has a range of seven. One, two, three, four, four, four. So they are all in its range, and this artillery has a range of eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So now they are not in the range. Every unit that lands, that performs a, a sea landing, and it is in the range of artillery, has to make a move, sorry, make a roll to see if it suffered any losses. We need to check artillery strength. For now it is one. That's why I told you that uh, this ground attack uh, air unit uh, attack was very effective, so we'll be using a verse of one, because we are using just the one strength point of one, and we have to make a roll for each of these units. Let's start with these guys. I'm rolling 2d6, it was 3, so they are safe. Next for them, 5, they are safe, and now for them, 7, Ooh, that was close, but they are safe. So, we managed to silence these Japanese gu guns quite effectively. So now our units might perform a sea landing. This infantry lands here. This infantry lands here. We have uh, uh, infantry battalions only and one combat engineers battalion. And this group will land here. So this uh, these landing ships are out. So that was our sea landing. It went quite well, I would say. Okay, that's all when it comes to the sea landing. And we are moving into the next phase, which is movement phase. So, in this phase, uh, a Soviet player might move his units. The ones that uh, make, made a sea landing, I mean regular infantry, uh, might move only a half of their movement allowance, while uh, uh, these marine units that, that were on the board before the game can move with their full movement allowance. So, what I'm going to do. These guys have five. One, two, three, four. They are in the enemy zone of control, so they cannot ma can, can't do much. They, they, they will just stay here. Now, they have only two movement points, so, sorry, two and a half, so they can move right here. They have two and a half movement points, so they move here. And this marine unit goes here. So, that's all. I cannot do much because of these Japanese units blocking my way. And now I can... Uh, sorry, next is Japanese counter-attack phase, and in this phase a Japanese player might move his units that are not in the uh, uh, Soviet uh, zone of control, 
and perform their attack if they can. But we don't have any opportunity because the, this battalion uh, can move here or there but there are no Soviet units and these, uh, these units are already in the enemy zones of control so they cannot perform counter-attack. So that's all and now I can per uh, we, we, are we are moving into the Soviet combat phase. I will use this A uh, unit to support this attack, this A uh, unit to perform to support this attack. Okay, and I will uh, use my uh, naval uh, uh, group to support attack on this Japanese battalion. So I hope this will be very effective. Oh my god! Oh my god, I totally forgot about mines. I totally forgot about mines and this is my mistake. So uh, let's make a roll for now. First for them, they are, that's fine. Now for them, okay, they moved on the minefield. So let's, let's place this minefield here. And now let's count, let's check if they suffered any losses because of this minefield. There are three Soviet battalions there and uh, these uh, Soviet battalions have uh, tw tw 12, uh, move 12 strength points. So I have to make a roll in the minefield table with the strength of 11, 14. No, 2. Mm. Two strength point loss. So, uh, two of these battalions will suffer one st one step one st strength point loss. It is three hundred and two regiment. Oh, that was bad. Okay, but anyway, th uh, this is not that bad because uh, this minefield is not blocking our our way anyway everywhere. It would be much much worse if it would if, if it would appear here for example or there because there is a road. But alright now we can go into the Soviet combat phase. I will start here. I am attacking with this uh, Soviet marine battalion. It has strength of two and I am supporting it with this uh, ground attack at the AO unit which has, five, which has a strength of five so they have total strength of seven and this artillery has a strength of 1 Beca uh, because first because it just it, it it already has one point because it was attacked by the AO units before but uh, anyway every time uh, your artillery unit fi uh, fights alone it ha it can only use one strength point anyway so we have 7 against 1 so it's uh, 7 to 1 we have 7 to 1 and uh, minus 1 because of the terrain. It is 6 to 1. So I am making a roll. It is 8. 8 in the 6 to 1 is B2. So defender has to retreat two hexes. And every time artillery is forced to retreat, it suffers a number of strength point equal to the number of hexes it has to retreat. So this artillery has to suffer two strength points loss and now because it, it has already won it is eliminated. So we managed to get rid of one unit of Japanese artillery. That's pretty good. They go out and I am able to move two hexes. One, two. This AO unit goes out. Now we have another combat here. These two battalions have uh, 8, 10, 12, 12, uh, 16. Combat engineers have 3, so we have 19 and 21. I have 21 plus 5, so it's 26. And now I'm going to make a roll for this uh, uh, naval uh, sport. It has six strength points, but I have to make a roll to see if if uh, if I will not suffer with some friendly fire. Well, not. If I would roll the same result on the Bob die, then they would hit not this hex but some adjacent hex. But not. So that it was 26 plus six, so I have 32 strength points, 
against the Japanese 3. So it's 32 against 3, so it is uh, 10 to 1, 10 to 1 minus 1 because of the terrain, so it's 9 to 1. Let's make a roll. 9, 9 in the 9 to 1 is b2. So defender has to retreat two hexes. 1, 2, we can remove this AO unit. And now attacker might uh, pursue it. 1, 2, 1, 2. You, you always have to occupy the hex, uh, sorry, you always have to move into the hex occupied by uh, enemy before and then you can uh, go one hex out of his escape road. So I moved here and one, that's all. And now we have to roll for losses. Now. Uh, Japanese unit, uh, sorry, Soviet units had 31, uh, 32, so they have 31, 35 verse, and we have to move one, one, uh, one verse down because of the terrain, so we will use 26, 30 verse. It is 6, so Japanese unit suffers 2 strength point loss. It was 282 battalion. And now we have to check for Soviet losses. Japanese units, unit had 3 strength point and plus 1 because of the terrain, so we have 4, 5. It is 4. So Soviets have to suffer 1 st strength point loss. Okay. And now we, we are going into the uh, Soviet supply phase. But in this, uh, in this game, uh, we are ignoring Supli uh, rules, so we, uh, we, we can ignore this phase as well. And uh, we are going into the Japanese uh, actions. So, uh, we can ignore all these phases about air stuff, sea landing stuff, because uh, Japanese, units, uh, Jap Japanese player has no such stuff. So we are uh, going right into the so uh, Japanese movement phase. So, this uh, unit goes 1, 2, this 1, because of the river, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, this artillery, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, that's good. They have enemy in their range. This battalion will fortify itself here. And the same goes to these combat engineers. Okay, I cannot move my, uh, my mechanized units because of the special, special scenario rules. I am able to move, move them uh, since the next day. So that's all when it comes to the Japanese movement uh, phase, I think. No, 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 there is one more action I want to do here. This lone battalion here has not much to do, so I would like to move it. One, two, three, four, five. And now we can try. So that's all when it comes to the uh, Japanese uh, movement phase. And next we have Soviet uh, counter-attack phase. In this uh, phase, Soviet player might move his units or stacks, but only one stack uh, or one unit per uh, counter-attack and to perform their counter-attacks. And that's what I'm going to do here. I will move this stack here, one hex, to attack this Japanese battalion. So, because of that, it will be occupied with these uh, Soviets and it won't be able to attack this Soviet Marine unit. So, I have two, uh, one Marine Battalion, it has two. Combat Engineers, it has three, so I have five. And three, 373. 
has three. So I have eight, and uh, Japanese uh, 282 has two. So I have eight against two, so it is four to one. I have a combat engineer, so I have plus one, so it's five to one, and minus the terrain, it is four to one. Five in the four to one is D2. So Japanese, uh, Japanese battalion has to retreat two hexes. Soviets might move here as well. And uh, now uh, we have to check for losses. Uh, Jap uh, Soviets had eight uh, strength points, so they will use six ten and minus one because of the terrain, so they have four five eight. No losses for Japanese units. And uh, Japanese battalion has two plus one because of the terrain, so it's four five as well. Eight, no losses for Soviets as well. That was Soviet counterattack, and now we have Japanese attack. This Japanese battalion uh, attacks this Soviet battalion, and with the support of this Japanese artillery. This Japanese artillery has four points, so four plus three. We have seven against two. Seven against two is three to one. Minus one because of the terrain, it's two to one. Ooh, bad roll. Two to one and ten, it is A1. So attacker has to retreat one hex. And now let's roll for losses. Japanese units had uh, six, so we will six ten. Sorry, seven, but it's still six ten, minus one because of the terrain, four five, eight, no losses, and now uh, Soviet unit had two, plus one and because of the terrain, it's four five, not ten. So Japanese battalion suffers one, one point loss. Hmm. Looks like, looks like Lady Luck is not on the Japanese side in this <laughs> scenario so far. Okay, that's all when it comes to the Japanese combat phase. And uh, like I said before, we are ignoring supply rules for this uh, scenario. So uh, that's all for the day one of the combat. We can go in, sorry, for the daily turn of the day one. We are moving into night turn of the day one. Now, in the night turns you are not allowed to use artil uh, your air units, so uh, we can skip all, this, uh, all, uh, all the phases, and we can go right into the movement phase. And in the uh, night uh, phase, uh, you, uh, 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 land units have their uh, uh, movement allowance reduced, so again... How it all says... In the night uh, turn, uh, each unit might move only by uh, one hex or two movement points. So, what I'm going to do, I will l uh, let these guys stay here, maybe I will move them here. These guys move one, two, because they are moving down the road, one, two. They move here, one, and I think that's all. I don't have much uh, to do, and attacking uh, during the night is uh, not a quite good idea. So that's all for uh, uh, Soviets. Sorry, that's for uh, that's when it comes to the Soviet uh, movement phase. And now we have a Japanese counterattack phase. And that's interesting, because in the uh, uh, special uh, rule about the Japanese army says that uh, in the first night turn uh, of, the, uh, of the game, ja all Jap Japanese units have to move and to perform an attack again against, uh, against the enemy. So, I will move like that. 
and like that. This battalion will move here. Okay, that's all. I will also move this battalion here. And now we have Soviet counterattack phase. So Soviets are able to counterattack if they want to. Now, they of course cannot. These two battalions might, and these two battalions might as well. We will see <coughs> if we managed to do so, but uh, fighting through the night comes with certain limitations. So, uh, our strength is halved, and we have to make a roll for any additional modifiers. <coughs> so, I'm starting here. I have two and four against Japanese battalion has three. Also, my strength is halved, so I have one and one, so I have two against three, so it's uh, one to two. I have to make a roll for <coughs> possible modifier two. That's bad because it provides me with minus two. It is minus two, so I had. Let's check. I had 1 to 2, now I get additional minus 2, and minus 1 because of the terrain. So I will use the worst possible combat uh, uh, column, 10, A2. That wasn't a very smart idea. Soviets have to retreat, 1, 2, and now let's check for losses, they had 2, minus one because of the terrain, so they are attacking, the uh, Japanese uh, losses will, will be fined in the verse of one, no losses, and now <coughs> Japanese unit had, had three, plus one because of the terrain, and uh, so it's four, five, eight, no losses <coughs> for Soviets, and now another counter-attack goes here, I have two and two, so I have four, Sorry, I have two, so it is uh, halved because of the night combat, so it's one, and it is three, it is halved into night combat, so it's two, so I have three against three, so it's one to one. Now I am rolling for the night modifier. Six, great! This is the only ro ro roll when attacker gets positive modifier, and it is plus two. Now, that's, that's great. So I have uh, 1 to 1, then I get plus 2, so I have 3 to 1, and I have combat engineers, so I have 5 to 1. And now, because of the ter terrain, it is reduced into 4 to 1. 4 to 1 and 10, it is B1. So, this Japanese unit has to retreat. This Soviet unit goes here, and now Let's check for losses. It is 2 3 for uh, Soviets and minus 1 for the terrain. 8, no losses. And Japanese had 2 3 plus 1 for the terrain. 7, no losses as well. Okay, that was Soviet counter attack. And now we are moving uh, into the Japanese combat phase. I am attacking this battalion and I am going to make a suicide attack. Japanese units are allowed to make such suicide attack, and uh, what makes suicide attack different from any other kind of attack? Uh, first, attacker's strength is doubled. So Japanese, uh, this Japanese battalion has three; it is doubled to six, and now it is halved because of the night attack. So it is uh, three again. Now I am rolling for the uh, night modifier, and it also uh, 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 says in the rules that uh, when Japanese unit attacks in the night, in the first uh, night turn of the game, then it gets plus one for the die roll for the night modifier attack. So it's six. So they get this great plus two modifier. Amazing. 
So we get 3 against 1, 5 has 2. So it's 1 to 1 plus 2 because of the night modifier and minus 1 because of the terrain. So we have 2 to 1. No, no, nothing, nothing, nothing happens. And now losses. Japanese unit had 3, minus 1, so it is 1, no losses for Soviet, Soviets, and now Soviet unit had 2, 3, plus 1, for 5, 8, no losses for Japanese counter-attacking units either. And this concludes day 1 of our battle. We are moving into day 2. And in this day, Jap uh, Soviets will have an another uh, units landing. But first we have a air phase. Now I want to perform one of my air units to attack this artillery while uh, two other will make... Oh! I forgot about this counter attack. Sorry, this uh, Japanese attack here. I have to uh, check it, make it before. So Japanese unit had two. It declares suicidal attack as well. So it has four. And because of the night attack, it has. Uh, sorry, I should remove these uh, units to make it make things clear. So it has uh, two against uh, uh, Jap uh, Soviet battalion that has three. So it is one to two. Night uh, night attack roll, it is 1, plus 1, it is 2, so it's minus 2. This is going to be a quite a uh, really suicidal attack. So it was 1 to 2, minus, one, minus 2 because the, this uh, unlucky uh, roll, and minus 1 because of the terrain. 5, it is A1. So Japanese unit retreats, Soviets might pursue, and now we have to roll for losses, remembering that if a Japanese unit suffers the losses, they are doubled. So Japanese unit had two, plus one, sorry, minus one, it is one, no losses for Soviets, and now Soviets had three, plus one, it's four, five, seven, Ooh. at last the uh, Japan, uh, Japanese uh, soldiers suffered no significant losses. So okay, let's go. Let's return to the uh, battle. I'm placing this AO unit here, this AO unit there, and now I have these uh, units uh, that are going to land. But first, I'm going to make my AO attack against this artillery. I have five, so let's make a roll. It is two. No losses at all. So these Japanese guns managed to hide from my ground attack air force. So next I'm going to place my infantry units on my landing ships. And where I'm going to land? I think they will go they are going to land here, they are going to land here, and they are going to land here. Okay, let's go with a landing. This artillery has a range of 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, no. They might land. Safe. They are landing here safely. And they are landing here safely as well. So, that's all when it comes to the sea landing. And next, uh, we are moving into the Soviet movement phase. Now this uh, regiment 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 goes here. These uh, two battalions are going to make the movement where? 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4 here. And now 
these guys. One, two, three, four, five. And finally, these guys, they landed. One, two, one, two, and one, two. All right. So now, uh, hmm, this battalion here, I will, pro I will attack here and I will attack here. So that's when it comes to the Soviet uh, movement phase. Next we, has, we have Japanese counter-attack phase. And the question is if Japanese uh, forces are about to counter-attack anywhere now? No, they don't have any opportunities to perform any counter-attacks. So we are moving right into the Soviet combat phase. Okay, let's go with uh, Soviet attacks. I will start here with these units attacking against this Japanese battalion. So, how, what is my strength? I have the entire 302 regiment that has 10 and now I have 12 and Two. it has four so I have total of 16 strength points against uh, this battalion has, that has three so I have 16 against three so it's uh, it is five to one uh, I have five to one and minus one because of the terrain it has four it gives me four to one let's make a roll Eight, eight in the fourth one is B1. So Japanese unit retreats one hex. These Soviets are taking their hex. And now let's roll for losses. Soviets had 16. So I will use a column of 16, 20. Minus one because of the terrain. It is 11, 15. Four. Now just single single point loss and now for Soviet losses it is 2-3 plus 1 because of the terrain it is 4-5 no losses for Soviets uh, another combat goes here I have 3 plus 2 it is 5 plus 5 it is 10 against against three and uh, Japanese unit uh, Japanese soldiers wants to call for the artillery support so it's one two three four five six seven this uh, artillery has them have has them in the in its range it has strength of four but when it supports defense its strength is halved so it's two so I have uh, five against ten so it's two to one uh, 3 to 1 because of the combat engineers and 2 to 1 because of the terrain. So it's 2 to 1 and 5. 5 in the 2 to 1 it is B1. So Japanese battalion retreats here. And now let's check for losses. Russian Soviets had 10. Minus 1 because of the terrain is 4 5. 4 one strength point loss for Jap Japanese battalion and now Japanese unit had five plus one because of the terrain six no losses Soviets were lucky here and of course I can perform pursuit this AO unit is removed and now here I will call for naval support as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So they are at the limit, limit because uh, naval support has eight hexes range. So I, I still can use this naval support. But first, I have to roll for possible friendly fire. Well, no friendly fire. Good. So I have seven plus five, so it's twelve, and this battalion has. 3, 
3, so I have 13, 13 against 2. So it's 6 to 1, minus 1 of the terrain, it's 5 to 1, 8, 8 in the 5 to 1 is B1. And now losses, 11, 15, minus 1 because of the terrain, it is 11, so two strength point loss for Japanese unit. Hmm. That was quite a devastating Soviet attack. And now uh, Soviet losses, 2, 3, plus 1, so it's 4, 5, verse 4, minus 1 for Soviets. And okay, that's all when it comes to the Soviets, uh, Soviet attacks. Now, uh, Japanese, uh, now we are moving into the Japanese stuff. So uh, first, I'm going to move my infantry. One, two, three, four. And maybe five. Sorry, no. <laughs> One, two. 3, 4, 5. So that's all. These guys. 1, 2, 3. This artillery. 1, 2. This battalion here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And now, according to the rules, I have to move all my uh, vehicles uh, to move them as close as t uh, to Soviets as possible. So these uh, they are moving. One, two, three, and now I have to check for how much, uh, how many points I have to pay for moving down the uh, uh, stream. This is motorized unit, so they have plus three, so they uh, they have two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Sorry, eight, nine. <laughs> okay, that's for this uh, armored cars, and now for these tanks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now these, these tanks will move here as well. These tanks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, seven and tanks. Seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, they will move here as well, and these tanks will go here as well. Okay, that's all for them. And now I forgot about one thing that I should do. It, I mean, to fortify these two Japanese battalions here. Okay, that's all when it comes to the Japanese movement and now we can do uh, this massive Japanese armored counterattack here. But first of course we can uh, uh, do any Soviet counterattacks. Hmm. I think I will do a single counterattack with this uh, regiment here. I will attack these armored cars, so might uh, eliminate them from attacking this uh, Soviet group. And I haven't any other opp opportunities to perform counterattacks. So this 322, sorry, 302 uh, infantry regiment has te 10 strength points, while this uh, armored cars company. has 3. So I have 3 to 1, minus 1 because of the uh, terrain, 
and minus one because of the star. You can see that uh, some of the armored units has a star. This star gives them another modifier for combat. So I have uh, three to one, two to one because of the terrain, and one to one because of the star. Ten. Oh, that's bad. Ten in the one to one means a one. So attacker has to retreat one hex. And now losses. Soviets have 10, minus 1 because of the terrain, and minus 1 because of the star. Because this star also works as modifier for this table, so we will 7, no losses for Japanese units, and now Japan, Japan, Japanese company has 3, plus 1 because of the terrain, plus 1 because of the star, so it's 6, 10, and 7, no. So, Soviets were lucky to not... Uh, not suffer any losses. Now we are attacking with Japanese uh, units. I will use these two companies and this battalion. I will not attack with this battalion. Why? Because if this, if I will have uh, some bad luck and I would have, I would be forced to retreat. I will still, I, I will still have a single battalion on this hex able to defend. So these two battalion uh, companies have. 2, 3 of 11. Each of them has 4, so they have 8, and this uh, battalion has 2, so I have 10. I have 10 against 3 and 5. So it's 2 to 1, 3 to 1 because of the modifier, because uh, no matter how many units uh, you are using for attack, you can only use uh, one modifier. You are always choosing the best modifier. So if you have, uh, you if you are attacking and you have uh, units uh, with one star and or with the and with the two stars, you are using the modifier uh, two stars modifier. You can't get all this modifier uh, together. So I have ten against uh, five, so it's two to one, three to one because of the modifier, two to one because of the terrain. Uh, as for combat engineers, they have their modifier, but only when they are attacking, not when they are defending. So we have 2 to 1 for Japanese, uh, and they, they have 5. So that's good. It is B1. So Soviets have to retreat 1 hex. And Japanese units are moving here. And now let's calculate the losses. We have 10 for Japan, minus 1 for terrain, and plus 1 because of the uh, star, so it's 6, 10. 6, 10, one strength point loss for Soviets. It is 4, 5. And now Japanese losses. Soviets at 5. Plus one for the terrain, minus one because of the enemy star. Five, no losses for Japan. Pretty good. And this concludes the, the first, uh, the day turn of the 19 August. We are moving into the night turn. Okay, since it's night turn, I can forget about my AO support, which you can see can be quite effective. So all I can do is to move my Soviets. Uh, so here, 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 one, two, one, two, one, two. So that's all when it comes to the Soviet movement phase. And next we have a Japanese counterattack phase. So Jap Japanese uh, units might counterattack, but remember this is night turn. In the night turn, uh, stars are not working, and uh, also you have this uh, nasty hal uh, half of your strength modifier. So it's not a very good idea to perform an attack when you are not sure you have enough strength points. 
So no, uh, Japanese player declares no counter attacks. So uh, uh, so uh, Soviets are attacking here. I have ten against three. So uh, sorry, ha ha ha. I don't have ten. They have ten, but I have to for I have to half this unit strength. So it's where they are. Two, two and two. So they have six. Six against two. It's uh, two. It's two to one. Minus one because of the uh, first. Let's make a roll for the knight combat. Oh my! That was extremely bad roll because minus because one means that attacker gets minus two modifier and suffers one point loss. Okay, so I have uh, two to one, minus one because of the river, minus one because of the terrain, so it's uh, one to two now, and minus two because of this uh, un uh, unlucky roll, so I have one, two, four. This is not going to end well, so we are using one to four table. Four. A pretty good roll, but still, A1. Attacker has to retreat one hex, so let them retreat here. They can, but they won't overstack hex here. So let's calculate the losses. They had uh, six, minus one because of the terrain. And my sorry, and minus one because of the river, so it's two three. Nine, no losses for Japan. Japanese unit has two three plus one plus two, six ten, and ten. One strength point loss for Soviets. That was very unlucky night combat for Soviets, and this concludes uh, uh, Soviet stuff in this uh, night turn. We can go into the Japanese. Uh, actions and now it is second night turn so Japanese uh, forces are not obliged to perform these night attacks so what Japanese units are going to do first I will move these tanks here this is night movement of course so only one hex these tanks here these tanks will remain in my reserve. These vehicles will move here, this artillery here, and this infantry there. So that's all when it comes to the uh, Japanese movement. And uh, now Soviet counterattack. Hmm. Hmm. Here. No, we already uh, we just saw what could happen to, during this un uh, during this night of combat. So no, Soviets are not counterattacking. Japanese units are not attacking. So this concludes second day of the combat. We are moving into day three, and now uh, starting with day three, uh, Japan uh, Japanese soldiers are getting uh, de uh, demoralized uh, because of their luck. The, of the unlucky news uh, from the uh, Jap from Japan, and uh, in this uh, starting with this turn, you have to roll for each of your unit, and if you roll four six, then this unit suffers one step loss. You are making this roll at the beginning of the uh, turn. So let's start with this artillery. No losses. Good. Now this battalion no losses this company one point loss now these units first infantry no losses first tank unit six one loss two eleven and three eleven first it was for two and now for three 
one point loss as well. Now, day four, six, and infantry. First for six, one step loss. Then for six. Oh, sorry, I forgot about uh, six, so one step loss. And now for infantry, six. Which infantry unit it is? 286. One point loss. This company, no losses. These tanks, one point loss. And the infantry with it, six, one point loss. It was 282. And it is eliminated because it has no strength points. Now, these combat engineers, four, one point loss. This uh, headquarter, one point loss. So even officers are escaping. And now this anti-air, no losses. This company, one point loss. Sorry, battalion. The other battalion, no losses. And this anti-air, no losses. Okay, so that was all. You can see uh, that this this is the thing that uh, changes the situation uh, on the battlefield. So now I can place my AO units. And uh, first, I will perform any other any uh, another AO attack here, while the other two will be used to uh, to support my attacks. First, I'm making an attack against this artillery, so I have to make a roll. Nah. A total miss. So that's uh, all. I don't get any other uh, land uh, sea uh, landing units, so I can remove this and move uh, this uh, naval support group a bit closer. Even so, most of the Japanese units are probably out of its range. And now we can go right into the Soviet movement phase. So, my goal would be to get rid of these nasty tanks here. So, one, two. One, two. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. I hope it will be enough. One, two, three, five. Now these guys are moving here. They are moving there. And they are joining them. This battalion one, two, three, four. And this headquarter goes here. Headquarter has not much to do in this uh, scenario. It, it, it has much more uh, uh, things to do when you, uh, when you have to care about Supli, but so, as for now it, has, uh, it hasn't much stuff to do. Okay, that's all when it comes to the Soviet mo movement phase. And now we have Japanese counter-attack phase. I don't think Japan, uh, Japanese soldiers are about to counterattack anywhere, so I can start with Soviet attacks. Now the question is if I can still use this uh, uh, naval support. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So yes, they are in the range. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They are in the range, and they too. So I have to divide my support. I will use air attack here, air ground attack here, and 
my naval support here. So let's start. I am attacking this uh, Japanese battalion with this uh, Soviet group supported by AO units. Okay, and I have. Now, this uh, regiment suffered some losses. No, not much. They still have 10. 10 plus 5, it's 15. It's uh, 15 against 283, 3. So it's 5 to 1, 4 to 1 against terrain, 3 to, one, uh, 3 to 1 because of the river, so it's 3 to 1. Let's make a roll. It is 5. 5 in the 3 to 1 is B2. So 1, 2. 1, 2. 1, 2. 1, 2. And now I have to make a roll for uh, Japanese losses. Soviets had 15, minus 1 for the terrain, minus 1 for the river, it is 4, 5. And I have 6, no losses. And the Japanese unit had uh, 3, plus 1, plus 2, 6, 10. 6 again, no losses as well. <laughs> So Japanese soldiers actually uh, managed to retreat without any serious combat started. So this aircraft is removed. Now I am attacking these uh, armored cars and I will use uh, my uh, naval support. So I have to roll for friendly fire. No friendly fire, so it's good. I have 7, 9, Nine, uh, twelve, uh, fourteen, and sixteen. So I have sixteen. Sorry, again. I have uh, seven, nine, nine plus three is twelve, fourteen, sixteen. Yes, I was right. Sixteen, and I will use this artillery support for a Japanese unit, so I have 2 plus 2, so I have 4. 16 against 4 is 4 to 1, minus 1 because of the terrain is 3 to 1, it is 4, 4 in the 3 to 1 is B2, so 1, 2, Soviets are moving, One, two. Okay, and now let's calculate the losses. Soviets had 15, so it's 11, 15. Minus one, it is 6, 10. Seven, no losses. Japs have two, plus one. Sorry, they have three, plus one, so it's four, five. 11, ooh, a single step loss for Soviets. And now my most important combat. I have five, eight, eight plus plus twelve is twenty, twenty plus uh, three is twenty three, twenty five and 29. So I have 29. That's pretty big against 2, 5 and 8. So I have 8. So it's 3 to 1, 4 to 1 because of the combat engineers, 3 to 1 because of the rain, and 2 to 1 because of the star. So it's 2 to 1. Mm -hmm. It is 3. 3 in the 2 to 1 is B2. So defender has to retreat 2 hexes. And now they have a problem. They cannot retreat here, 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 here or here. 
and they can retreat to their friendly units but only during the night turn. In the day turn uh, they cannot. I need to make sure. Yes, they can, but they have to suffer one point loss for each of such hexes. So they have to retreat two hexes, so one, two. This battalion suffers one, step lo one point loss. They are moving one, two. This company suffers another loss. And one, two. They are suffering another point loss. And Soviets are capturing this hex. And now let's roll for losses. Soviets had 25. So it was 2125. Tw minus 1 because of the terrain. Minus 1 because of the tank modifier. So it's 1115. It is 9. So, one point loss. And Japanese uh, forces had 8, so it's 610, plus 1, plus 2, so it's 1620. And it is 8, so one point loss for Soviets. Okay, that's all when it comes to the Soviet attack. We are going into the Japanese actions. So let's go to the Japanese movement phase. And I will go 1, 2. And I cannot move any further because this artillery has only 3 movement points. Now they 1, 2, 3, 4. They move here. 1, 2, sorry. 1, 1, 2, one, two 3, four five, 4, 5. These tanks will take its place. These tanks will move here. This battalion go here. And these tanks will go here. In hope to perform some solid line of defense. This battalion 1, 2, 3, 4. And they will defend this bridgehead. So that's all when it comes to the uh, Soviet, uh, sorry, Russian movement phase. Next we have Soviet counter-attack phase. Mm -hmm. Don't have much stuff to do here because I will need much more, uh, much stronger units to attack this uh, bridgehead. But I can use this battalion. How many points it has? Three to attack this uh, Japanese artillery because attacking, art uh, attacking artillery in the direct combat is often very effective. So, uh, I am attacking this artillery. I have 3 against 1, so it's 3 to 1, minus 1 for terrain, so it's 2 to 1, and it's 4. 4 in the 2 to 1 is B2, so this artillery has to retreat 2 hexes, 1, 2, and then, because it is artillery, it has to suffer suffer two, two points losses. Only a self-propelled artillery is safe from, the, uh, from these retreat losses. So this uh, Soviet battalion pursues. And now let's roll for losses. It was 2-3, minus 1 for terrain. No losses for Japan. And 1 plus 2 for terrain, so 2-3 the verse. 10. I know it was 1 and 1, but when, I, when my die gets out of the tray, I always reroll my, uh, my die. So it's 10, 2, 3. No, that was close, but no losses for uh, Soviets. And now we have uh, Japanese combat phase, so uh, Japanese soldiers are not attacking anywhere. So th this concludes daily turn of the 20 August. We are moving into the night turn of the 20 August. Now uh, I have to remove this AO unit and let's go straight into the Soviet movement phase. I will move here. These guys will... Now the question is if I want to make a massive night attack against these so, uh, Japanese uh, units. 
this can be a, a very risky thing because I uh, I have a lot of uh, Soviets here, but uh, you know they are uh, they have their strength halved. So no, I'm not going to make any uh, night attacks. These these guys will move here or not? Let them stay here. They will move out because if they would be if they would stay here, they would have to attack this uh, uh, Japanese unit because uh, you have to attack each enemy unit in your uh, zone of control so that's all for uh, Soviets and now I the only thing I'm going to do is to attack here because attacking this uh, Japanese artillery might be effective I have three it is halved so I have uh, hmm. Nah, I'm not quite sure. But well, I declared attack, so let's go. I, uh, it's too late to change uh, my mind now. So I have three against one, but they have uh, their strength halved, so they have two. Two against one, it's uh, one to one. And because of the terrain, it's one to one. And now I have to roll for a night modifier. It is four, no modifiers. That's pretty good. So I have two to one. And let's make a roll. Five. That's pretty good. Five in the two to one is B1. So defender has to retreat one hex. And because this artillery suffers one step loss, and it is eliminated. Even so, I have to roll for possible Soviet losses. The Japanese unit has had a strength of one plus one because of the, of the terrain. No losses for Soviets. Okay, that's all for Soviets, and now Japan. This is night turn, yes. So I think Japanese units will just start, stay on their positions and do nothing. They, they, their goal is to hold uh, Soviets and to, to make them uh, not advance. So they don't even have to attack, they just have to defend. So that's all for this night turn, and we are moving into the 21st August. And first thing we have to do is to roll again for the Japanese losses because of these bad news coming from Japan. Let's start here. This battalion, three, no losses. The other battalion, four, one point loss. 283. Now, this stack, first for tanks, no losses for armored cars for one loss. Now for this group, this is going to be pretty important because it, it is a backbone of my defense. So first for tanks, one point loss. The other tanks, no losses. And the infantry, one point loss. It is 286. Now these two stacks. First day tanks for one point loss. So they are eliminated. Infantry five one point loss. Eliminated as well. Now this, this group, 5, 1 point loss, and the other tank, no losses. These combat engineers, 6, 1 point loss, they are gone, along with their fortification, hit quarter, 1 point loss. Anti-AO unit, no losses, 52 battalion, one point loss. Fifty-one battalion, no losses, and the last anti-AO unit, six, one point loss. Okay, that's all. You can tell that uh, Japan, uh, Jap Japanese uh, line uh, is shaking 
and uh, their soldiers are not very willing to fight now because of the bad news coming from the capital so that this is good for Soviets of course <clears throat> okay let's go and start Soviet stuff first my AO units I think I will use all of them to support my combat for now because I moved uh, deeper into the uh, island and I cannot uh, count uh, on my naval units for now so I have to uh, rely on my ground support Soviets had quite uh, very effective uh, ground uh, support uh, units during World War II after all okay let's go and move our Soviets one two three four five one two one two one two three four and one two one two I will use my a ground air attack here and one two three four five six seven eight still in my range at the verge of my range but still I can use it good all right so let's go and make our atta Soviet attacks because uh, Japanese soldier Japanese units are definitely not in the mood to perform any counter attacks okay let's start here I have the entire 302 regiment it has five uh, sorry four seven ten ten plus five it is fifteen fifteen against two hundred two and five so it's uh, fifteen against five it's uh, three to one minus terrain it's two to one it is seven seven in the two to one is B1 so Japanese units have to retreat Soviets are making their pursuit and now uh, losses Soviets had 15 so minus 1 because of the terrain is 610 it is 6 in the 610 no losses and the Japs have 4 5 plus 1 so it's again 610 verse and it's seven no losses either okay so now here I have two four six and this battalion has three so I have nine nine plus five it's fifteen sorry fourteen fourteen against three 14 against 3 it is 5 to 1 5 to 1 uh, and now uh, 4 to 1 because of the star 3 to 1 because of the terrain so it's 3 to 1 and it is 9 9 in the 3 to 1 is B1 so that's all and now losses we had 14 minus 1 minus 2 so 4 5 verse and 5 in the 4 5 no losses and now Soviet losses 2 3 plus 2 6 10 verse 7 no losses <laughs> that's interesting <laughs> second battle and no losses for each side and now here I have to roll for my naval support no friendly fire good so I have 7 plus 5 it is 12 15 15 plus uh, uh, 12 it's uh, 27 27 plus 3 is uh, 30 32 and 32 plus 4 is 36 so I have 36 against against 1 
three and five. So thirty six against five is um, six to one. 7 to 1 because of combat engineers, 6 to 1 because of the star, 5 to 1 because of the fortification, and 4 to 1 because of the terrain. So it's 4 to 1, and it's 8, so it's B1. And now Japanese unit, uh, units have no chance to retreat, because this hex is in, a, in the enemy zone of control, this hex either this hex either and this hex either. So they cannot retreat and because of that each of these units has to suffer one stat loss. So these tanks are eliminated. 6-1 suffers one step loss and 286 one point loss. And now let's check for losses. Soviets had 36, this is I think the biggest number we had in this game so far, so it's 36 for T, minus 1 because of terrain, minus 1 because of the fortification, and minus 1 because of the star. So it's 20, 21, 25 verse, and it is uh, 6 plus 5, it is 11. 11, wow! 3 points lost. That's pretty impressive. So 6 1 is eliminated, 6 11, and these guys suffer two, 2 points loss. So they are eliminated as well. That was a devastating Soviet attack. And now for Soviets, uh, Japanese units had 6 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3. 5, 2 points. No, no, that was... I will go with these units. Okay, and now because enemy was eliminated, I can take a vacant hex. Okay, that's all when it comes to the Soviet combat phase. And now I can remove these AO units. And now we are moving into the Japanese movement phase. Hmm. As you can see, Jap Jap Japanese units are in a very problematic situation. I think I will. Ha I have to retreat. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Sorry. <laughs> one, two, three, four. 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, sorry, sorry, 1, 2, and that's what I'm going to do, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, okay, that's all for Japanese units to do, and we are going into the night turn. So, Soviets can move only one, one hex or two movement points. So one, two, this stack goes here down the road, they go on the road, they go on the road, and they go here. So that's for Soviets. Uh, Japanese uh, Forces are moved, Japanese soldiers are moving just here, and that's all for the night turn. So we are going into the next day turn, and again I have to roll for this uh, un, uh, this bad news for Japan. First, these these battalions, no losses, no losses. Now these two, one point loss. And the other one point loss either. So it is eliminated. Now for this recon, it is eliminated. And these three, oh, 
sorry. It is safe. Now for hit quarter, six eliminated. Anti air, no losses, fifty two, one point loss eliminated and an anti air too safe. Oh not much of Japanese units remains uh, willing to fight so uh, let's go and try to finish them out. I'm going to place my ground attack air units and let's go with Soviets. Okay, we are starting with AO phase and I think I will try to do something else now because I would like to clear my way. So I will make ground at my ground attack AO force to attack these Japanese tanks. In the direct attack, first my first group, it is two, miss. Maybe a second group will be more lucky, five. Yes, it is 4, so uh, Japanese unit suffers 1 step loss, and 3, 11... Oh, it had, it had 2 strength points, so it is, still, uh, it is still not eliminated. Ok, and what I'm going to do next, I, I would like to clear my way through this uh, uh, narrow path here, and uh, to make it, I would like to perform an attack from Mars. What is attack from Mars? It is a kind of combat that allows you to use your to make your units move and attack the enemy, and the other units are still able to move. So it is a combat in the movement phase. How to make it? You need to choose your units that are about to attack. I will choose these two battalions, and they will move here and go with com combat, from the mar mar uh, combat from the marsh. Th they can use only 2-3 of their strength. So each of them has 4, so they will have three. each of them has 3 now. So they have 6. This Japanese battalion has 1, so it is 6 to 1, minus 1 because of the terrain, minus 1 because of the river, minus 1 because of the star. So it's 3 to 1, sorry, 6 to 1, 5, 4, 3. Yes, 3 to 1. So I'm making a roll. It is 6. 6 in the 3 to 1 is B1. So the Japanese unit has to retreat. They are taking its place and we have a roll for losses. Uh, uh, Japan, uh, Soviets had 6, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, so they have uh, they, they roll with 1. Oh, that was close, but no losses for uh, for Japanese tanks. And now Japanese tanks, they had 1, plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, so 6, 10 verse. And it is uh, 4, 1 point loss for Soviets. And the good thing is that these units, when they managed to uh, make enemy uh, retreat, they will be still able to fight in their combat phase. So, one, two, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, sorry, one, two, three, so I cannot move any further. One, two, three, four. That's what I'm going to do here. And now this regiment, one, two, three, four, goes here. So let's go and resolve combat. I will attack these tanks with this, this lone group. It has four and three. So it's 7. 7 against 1 is uh, 7 to 1. 8 to 1 because of combat engineers. 6 to 1 because of the ter ter terrain. 5 to 1 because of the river. And 4 to 1 because of the star. 
5, 5 in the 4 to 1 is B2. So Japanese tanks have to retreat here. 1, 2, 1, 2. And now let's roll for losses. Soviets had 7, minus 1, minus 3, minus 1. So no losses for Jap Japanese tanks. And Japanese tanks has 1, plus 2, 3, 6, 10. It is 5, 1 point loss for Soviets. So despite being uh, outnumbered, they are still uh, uh, they, they are still fighting bravely. We will see we will see how long. Okay, the next combat goes here. I have ten plus five, so it's fifteen, and these two battalions have five. Yes, they were they were quite lucky with suffering not much losses so far. So they have five against fifteen, so it's three to one. 2 to 1 because of the terrain and 1 to 1 because of the river. So it's 1 to 1 and 7 in the 1 to 1 means nothing. Okay, losses. 11, 15, minus 1 and minus 2 for 5. No losses for Japan. And Japan has 4, 5 plus 2, 11, 15, 6. One point loss for Soviets. Okay, and the most important battle here. Need to check. They have three, five, seven, eleven, and eleven plus three is fourteen. Fourteen against one. Fourteen against one is ten to one minus 1 because of the attack through the uh, river and minus uh, 2 because of the terrain so it's 8 to 1 oh my <laughs> 11 in the 8 to 1 is b1 so defender retreats just the one hex <laughs> and now losses for uh, uh, soviets it is 4 5 verse Sorry, for Japan, it is 4 5 verse. So, one point. Ha! Huh, that was enough to get rid of these annoying ta uh, Japanese tanks. Still, we have to roll for Soviet losses. They have, uh, uh, Japanese tanks have 1, plus 1, and plus 2. So, 4 5. 7. No losses for Soviets. Okay, that's all when it comes to the Soviet combat phase. And we can go to the Japan Japanese units. Not much of the Japan, uh, Japanese units actually remains on the board. But still they will try to defend themselves. I will fortify these two battalions. And I will move these tanks here. And I, I afraid that's all. That's everything uh, Japanese uh, units uh, Japan, uh, can do. So we are going into the night turn. Okay, we have a night turn. So uh, AO units go away and let's go. First this stack, one, two, one, two, one, two, and now Mm. I'm thinking if they need to attack. I'm not. <clears throat> I don't think so. So I will move them here. And they. These guys have all. These tanks have only one <coughs> strength point. But even so, attacking in the night with this negative modifier, no. I'm not going to make any attacks. So that's all for uh, Soviets. So I'm going to finish uh, these uh, Soviet actions and now uh, Japanese actions. Oh, these tanks, and they won't reach uh, this uh, town. 
because this is a knight turn so let them stay where they are defending this position <clears throat> so that's all for Japanese uh, I'm not going to make any uh, counterattacks uh, or with Soviets and no I don't have any uh, way to attack with Japanese forces so we are finishing this day and we are moving right into the last day of battle of course we have to start with the <coughs> uh, uh, growing uh, uh, loss of morale of Japanese forces. Let's go with this stack first. Four. So they lose one strength point, then the other battalion two. It has 284. Wow, they still have their original strength point. Now these tanks. Oh! They are done. Now anti-ale. Anti it loses. 51 company. It is one point down. And this anti air battery, it is safe. Okay, so that's all when it comes to the uh, loss of uh, uh, loss of uh, strength points and now I can I'm go I'm going into the air phase so I can place my air units and I'm going to make it like this and here and here okay so let's go to the Japan uh, to the uh, Soviet movement phase so this stack goes all together one two three for. <clears throat> Why I didn't stop here? Because this unit has only one strength point and units with one strength point hasn't zone of control. So these guys are just moving here. I'm not sure if I need even need to attack here. I think uh, this is not, a, not something I should do but well <laughs> let's carry on this combat. Uh, and uh, now it, it is uh, Japanese counter-attack phase. Well, Japanese uh, forces have no, no chance to counter-attack because you can see this anti-air batteries has, has zero movement points, so they cannot even move. So let's go and make uh, Soviet attacks. If we will be able to capture this Kotalka uh, town, we, ha we, we, we gain instant victory with Soviets. So I think this is uh, quite good quite good if we'll be able to do so. So let's go. First I'm going to use two ground attack air force uh, counters here and uh, this hex is, protect is protected by these two anti-air batteries. So we have to make a roll to see if <coughs> our ground attack air units can be used. First these guys uh, this these uh, guys are in the these guys are in the two hexes range and these guys are in the one hex range so we have to use this table with uh, light artillery and make a roll first uh, for this anti air artillery it is 3 and then for this anti air artillery it is 5 so 3 it was a miss but 5 it was a hit so you uh, means uh, sorry <laughs> I forgot about modifiers we get minus two if we are firing uh, from the two hexes range and minus one if we are firing from the uh, one hex range so uh, we get minus two here so it was a miss anyway and now they they had five and now they get minus one so they get four even so they score at a hit you minus one you means that they are escaping, they, have, they, are, they are withdrawing, they cannot provide any support and minus one means that they are losing one strength point. So they failed and now <clears throat> they are moving here so we have to make uh, a roll for them. Now first this, two, it was a miss and now they, six, oh, minus one is five it is you minus one again. So they managed to <coughs> drive these anti air units away and even suffer, make them suffer some losses. Hmm. Interesting. 
Okay, so let's go and carry on this combat. We have two, four, six, ten, fourteen. I have fourteen strength points here. Against fifty one has two. So it's seven, it's uh, fourteen to two, it is seven to one, and now it's six to one because of the terrain, uh, five, uh, uh, five to one because of the fortification, four to one because of the buildings. So it's four to one. Oh wow! Eleven. Eleven in the four to one, it is nothing! Japanese soldiers managed to keep their position. Wow, impressive. So let's make a rolls for losses. It was uh, 14 for uh, Jap uh, for uh, Soviets, minus one because of the terrain, minus one because of the fortification, and minus one because of the town. It is seven, no losses for Japan. And now Japanese soldiers have two, plus one, plus two, plus three. 8. So, Soviets are suffering one step loss. Hmm. So, this is, this is the end of the battle, and even so, they still manage to, uh, uh, <coughs> to uh, do something good. Alright, we have one more battle here, and now, this 302 has 9, they have 3, so it's 20, 12, and this battalion has 3, so it's 15, and now this uh, AO unit has 5, so it is 20. It is 20 against 3 and 2. So it's 20 against 5, so it's 4 to 1, 6 to 1 because of the combat engineers, 4 to 1 because of the river, 3 to 1 because of the fortifications and 2 to 1 because of the terrain. 6. 6 in the 2 to 1 it is B1. So Japanese soldiers are retreating 1 hex. Soviets are moving and now let's go for losses. The Soviets had 15 and minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. No losses for Japan, and Japan had 5, plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, 6, 1 point for Soviets. Alright, that's all for Soviets, now uh, let's go to the Japan. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and that's all, not much. <laughs> Uh, not, nothing, not much uh, they can do, no counter-attacks for Soviets, so uh, we can go on and finish uh, this uh, turn. And we are moving into the last turn of battle, this is a night turn. Mm -hmm. And what? It gives me a little. Soviets can do much, because they can move just one hex, so it's here, here, one, two, or one, two. And I can attack here again, but with these negative night modifiers. So I have to try. I have to try. So I have 14 here, so I have 7 now. 7 against 2. It is 3 to 1. It is 3 to 1. Uh, 2 to 1 because of the fortifications. Uh, 2 to 1 because of the terrain. Sorry, 1 to 1 because of the terrain. And 1 to 2 because of the uh, town. So it's 1 to 2, so the odds are uh, positive for Japan. Japan, let's make a roll. It is 4, 4 in the 1 to 2, it is nothing. Again, Japanese soldiers are holding their position firm. Wow, they made a quite, a, quite a stand. Oh, I forgot even to make a roll for the night uh, turn, so sorry. Oh, let's forget about it. Let's forget about it. 
so uh, they uh, made it and now I don't have a, they, I don't even have to roll for losses because uh, if Japan uh, Japanese forces are able to hold this town till the end of the scenario they gain victory even without these uh, huge losses they are still victorious because they managed to keep this town till the end of the battle okay this concludes our game it was um, I think pretty long because I explain it a lot. It would go uh, much uh, quicker uh, quicker if, if I would not explain everything and to just play. But I wanted to make this video kind of tutorial alike to show you how this system works. So that's all for now. Thank you for watching and see you again.